What's going on guys and welcome to another crack a pack episode today We are opening up a pack of 2010 core set. This is not a set that I actually have opened that much of uh, So I'm pretty excited about this keep in mind though. This is a core set So the cards are generally going to be a little bit undervalued and underpowered uh, when it comes to an actual draft scenario But we will of course still go through this as if it is a draft scenario So we'll figure out what our pack one pick one pick would be if I can actually open the back uh, again, I didn't actually open much of this, so I don't know what's in this set, uh, but I assume that this will be a fairly easy one to determine. So our first card here is Seismic Strike. It's an instant for two and a red. Deals damage to target creature equal to the number of mountains you control. This is a pretty basic card, but really, really powerful. Obviously late game, if you're in red, you're going to have a lot of mountains to deal a lot of damage. Keeping in mind, this only hits creatures, not players, so this cannot be a game ender necessarily. Uh, but it is still really, really powerful to be able to deal with some of their threats. I actually really like this card. Pretty good start so far. Uh, Deadly Recluse is a 1-2 for 1 and a green. It does have Reach. It also has Death Touch. Uh, this is also a very strong card, to be honest. Uh, being able to throw this out on 2, uh, even late game, is going to deter any really big, powerful creatures from swinging in. Uh, just because this can block them and it can kill them because it doesn't matter how much damage it only needs to do one uh, On top of that it does also have reach uh, so it's gonna be able to deal with flyers pretty well Honestly, I kind of like this better than the seismic strike uh, because it is a threat on board also uh, So so far that definitely is the pick that's solid uh, Illusionary servant is a three four for one and two blue it does have flying uh, and when it becomes the target of a spell or ability, you do have to sacrifice it. That's the classic illusion issue. Uh, it's usually pretty powerful for its uh, casting cost, but as soon as you target it, it just, it, it just dies, unfortunately. Uh, I don't really like cards like this because it's very short-term investment, we'll say. Uh, it's very easy for you to play this, and then on your opponent's turn, they can target it with literal anything, and it just dies. So don't really like that. Uh, not a fan of that card. Uh, Warpath Ghoul is a 3-2 vanilla creature for 2 and a black. This is honestly just a filler card. A 3-2 for 3 is probably on par for what's normal in this set, uh, if I had to guess. It's not amazing, but it's also just a solid 3 drop, so might as well play it if you need to. Uh, but definitely not powerful or more powerful than the uh, Deadly Recluse. Uh, Excommunicate is a sorcery for two and a white. Put target creature on top of its owner's library. This is actually a really powerful effect. Uh, it takes a turn off for the opponent most of the time because they just end up replaying uh, whatever card you just bounced. Um, generally speaking, that's how it goes, I will say. Uh, especially late game when there really isn't many options. It's a really good way to just kind of gain some tempo, get a turn ahead, uh, and do hopefully some really strong damage. It also... In a pinch, it can also just kind of throw uh, an issue into them finding lands if they're mana screwed or something like that. You just throw a creature back on top, and now you know for a fact they are not going to draw a land that turn either. Uh, so it is actually pretty powerful. Probably would still take the Deadly Recluse over it, though. Uh, just personal preference, honestly. Uh, Trumpet Blast. An instant for two and a red. Attacking creatures get plus two, plus zero until end of turn. This is a very notorious card because it actually ends games very, very quickly in a very uh, go-wide aggro strategy. Uh, just being able to pump all of your creatures for plus two is huge, uh, especially only on turn three. If, you're, if you've got like one or two creatures out, maybe it does a pretty good chunk of damage, but late game, uh, this can actually just end it completely because if... If you've got three or four creatures that are unblocked uh, and they're dealing a lot of damage each and then you're buffing it by two, that's just so much damage piling on. And so Trumpet Blast is actually a really solid card. I tend to want to be in the go wide strategy first, so I wouldn't pick this first, but it is really, really good. Uh, Zephyr Spir Sprite excuse me, is a 1-1 one, one for one blue and it has flying. Pretty classic uh, flying man kind of card, but it is actually just a solid one drop. Uh, it's not amazing, but it's definitely good. Being able to start pinging the opponent early uh, is always welcome. So I do like this card. I would still take the spider over it, but it is actually not bad. Uh, Palace Guard is a 1-4 for 2 and a white. Uh, it can block any number of creatures. This is an interesting, really defensive card. I tend not to like very defensive cards because they do just kind of stall out. 
uh, this will eventually get outpowered. It's not like it's huge, so uh, it's going to just die eventually. But it does kind of gain you some... Uh, Theoretically, it kind of gains you some life just because uh, it's blocking so many creatures and hopefully in the early game It just staves off tons and tons of attacks, but that's ideal. Uh, so I really don't like that. Uh, it just seems kind of bad for me uh, Disentomb is a sorcery for one black return target creature card from your graveyard to your hand This is a card that's been around for quite a while uh, Really like it though. It's efficient being able to pull back a creature uh, for only one mana means you're probably going to be able to play it that turn as well uh, and so I really like this card being able to pull back a huge threat is good I tend to also want to have the huge threat first uh, And so again, this isn't really a first pickable card, but it is one that I wouldn't be unhappy to have uh, Maybe just as a one of in a black deck for sure uh, Emerald Oryx is a 2-3 three for 3 in a green. It does have forest walk So it's unblockable if the defending player controls a forest uh, this is like one of those weird random upside cards where you might want to side it in against a green deck But there's really not a good reason to play it just in general. Uh, it's a two three for four, which is real bad uh, But against a green deck, it's an unblockable two three for four, which seems to make it pretty good So this is more sideboard in my mind uh, It's something I'd probably be interested in taking if I was in green and there weren't any better picks, but uh, it is actually a really just a sideboard card because it's not good against anything but a green deck Our first uncommon here is demon's horn. Uh, it's an artifact for two mana whenever a player casts a black spell You may gain one life uh, This these cards were like not my favorite uh, life gain in limited just not it doesn't really do enough for me uh, Generally, it just stalls out the game and if that's all your deck does is gain life Eventually, you're just gonna get outpowered. That's usually just how it goes. So cards like this are not my favorite uh, That being said, I don't know during this time. It may have actually been an okay pick uh, Just because uh, gaining incidental life is gonna keep you alive against a lot of the aggro decks I feel like this personally would be something I would want for a sideboard if I was in a black deck uh, but I do believe they have the full cycle. You can get them for every color. Uh, and so maybe it's something that you'd want in the sideboard just against like an aggro matchup or something like that. But in general, it doesn't seem too exciting to me. Uh, Cudgel Troll, hopefully saying that correctly. It's a 4-3 for 2 and 2 green and you can pay a green and regenerate it. Uh, this is a really interesting card. It's like a solid 4 drop, I would say. Uh, I don't think it's that amazing and honestly, I'd still take the spider over it uh, I know that may seem crazy, but the spider seems really good to me. It's basically a removal spell in green uh, And so a 4-3 for 4 pretty on par being able to regenerate it just takes it up a little bit higher for me uh, I do really like this card. It may be that this is a better pick uh, So feel free to let me know in the comment section, but uh, I don't think I want it over the spider uh, Wall of Frost is a 0-7 wall for one and two blue. It does have defender and when it uh, blocks a creature that creature does not untap during its controllers next untap step Okay, so now this kind of this kind of makes me think a little bit because I really like this card It is a very defensive card uh, But it's also a very tempo based card uh, and what I mean by that is yes It's a 0-7 that's really just blocking for you But on top of that it's meaning that those creatures don't untap during their next players untap step which is actually a huge just tempo swing uh, being able to tap something down is really really powerful uh, So I kind of like this at only three mana too You're gonna be able to get it out pretty early and it's gonna do a lot of work for you I feel like so honestly this may be incorrect, but I kind of like wall of frost at uh, at this point We do have the rare of course, which is mana barbs So it's an enchantment for three and a red uh, whenever a player taps a land for mana it deals one damage to that player Really don't like this card in limited. Uh, this is good in certain strategies, but really not good in limited uh, because you have no idea what you're up against. They could literally just not do anything, and you have to keep playing stuff, and so it's, it just doesn't work. So, don't really like a card like this in limited. Definitely not for me. Uh, I do think, weirdly, Wall of Frost might be my pick. Uh, I tend to go for a little more of a tempo game anyway, though, so that might be why. Feel free to let me know in the comment section if you disagree, of course, uh, we can talk about it there. But if you enjoyed this video, please make sure to leave a like or a comment down below. And as always, please make sure to subscribe to stay up to date on all of our awesome content. But with that, I'm going to get out of here. Thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you in the next Crack a Pack episode.